Hello everybody and thank you for joining. This is your host Nino and I am about to show you a couple of things about my wonderful Windows XP system. Now this is a system I have not turned on previously for six years. It has one of those classical uh, fat uh, monitors, uh, not one of those thin uh, ones. <laughs> I love CRTs. And turning it on was seriously maybe comparable to that what others experience when they try to restore an old timer or something. A couple of things work, a couple of things don't, everything takes an eternity, nothing works as expected. And yeah, as you can see, <laughs> We're like one minute into the video and Windows XP is still starting. So, oh, <laughs> got its video driver, but it's still starting. Okay, fine. So in this video, I'm just going to make a couple of remarks of what I saw, what I did, what worked for me. And in the end, I managed actually to restore it. At least that is what I believe to a point in which it has become pretty usable again and yeah <laughs> that is today's topic restoring the dinosaur all right i'm going to give you a bit of a break until the whole thing appears because this really who knows how long this is going to take Ooh, we got a mouse cursor and we have somewhat advanced And there it is. The somewhat broken Windows startup sound on this trusty Rosinante. The trouble with trusty Rosinante was that it contained all of my more interesting programs, games and amusements of all times. Like, like my battlefield, including the Desert Combat mod, Defcon, uh, Age of Empires, Red Baron. I mean, I did not want to leave all of this behind. Of course, there's stuff like Skype, which I haven't turned on and won't turn on. <laughs> but the task was to restore it. And yeah, that is something... I actually enjoy. Well, then let's jump a little bit into discussing things here. While exploring the system, I found that I had actually prepared a folder to transfer, and I indeed even called it XFER or transfer shortened in which I had put the most relevant materials which I was hoping to transfer from the computer to the outside world. But it was a humongous size of 120 gigabyte. But as that was six years ago, I now just simply plugged in a USB stick and while it is a USB 3 stick and this shouldn't take all that long, the port just isn't fast enough and therefore this is really taking a good eternity. And the screen is apparently <laughs> synchronizing here strangely with the CRT's refresh rate. All right, time to delete this absolutely huge transfer folder which on this slow XP machine really will take a long time. <sighs> so, what's wrong though, it is pretty fast. Uh, and I'm protesting that something can't be deleted because it is in use, whatever. Shall I try to defragment my disk? Well, after having deleted quite so much stuff, 
I totally could imagine that that should be a viable possibility. So let us first test it. And this is the, well, space usage prior to the fragmentation. Let's give it some time to, to check it. Cool, it does propose to me defragmentation. So I'm going to tell defragmentieren. I don't even remember having used defragmentation on any Windows system beyond 98. But maybe there's always a first. So <laughs> now it is um, checking how things will look like after the fragmentation. All right, now it has started the fragmentation. So it is showing in the upper line how my files look prior to the fragmentation red being particularly fragmented stuff and the lower line is showing how it is estimated that things will look after the fragmentation i must say i loved more this thing with the little boxes that we know from from dos times and and windows 95 and 98 times but Okay, as long as it does the job, I shall be happy. Alright, this is taking a long time and it is by far not as satisfying to watch <laughs> as in previous versions of Windows, so I'll just let it do its job. That is, by the way, a heavily fragmented NTFS file system, so that's not a FAT32 story. Defragmentation has been performed for drive C. Some of the files on this volume could not be defragmented. Check the list of these files in the defragmentation report. Well, I shall do so. As you can see, this literally took a couple of hours to do. So let's now see what the defragmentation report is gonna say. Looking at the defragmentation report, it doesn't say anything particularly bad. It just tells me that the swap file is fragmented and that the general overall number of the fragments is 44. I mean, big deal as if I use that often. But okay, the fragmentation has been successfully concluded. Oh, oh, the computer might be endangered. No firewall has been activated. Well, that is necessary when you have a couple of games on XP, right? Automatic updates are deactivated. <laughs> As if anybody is offering such in 2023. And Semantic Antivirus Corporate Edition is deactivated. Do I even still have that? I should definitely uninstall it. Yeah, now it tells me maybe there is no antivirus software. While well, I was deinstalling Symantec, unfortunately it told me some files have been in quarantine, shall they be deleted? Definitely. And I was too trigger happy and clicked yes. Now it may have destroyed some part of my experiments and I don't even know which. When Firefox started, it could not really visit any websites. Because no matter where I went, it would show me immediately some certificate error. I don't know why or how, but this is no longer the case. However, today, as I was struggling with it, my trick to cope, which you might find useful, was to create a web server on my Android phone. Here you see it on the web address, actually. And download everything on my phone and from there through my own server transfer it to the stationary computer the image offered upon the start of firefox was just awesome half the websites which i had visited simply no longer existed and the other half as i mentioned were inaccessible 
other browsers well that was a bit of a hit and miss in the end i found three things which actually did work which were slimjet otter browser and links up to 2.14 but not further than that these i shall show you in a moment in detail now i promised to show you the three browsers that did work and I don't really need more, many more, I don't really collect browsers. One of them, however, is my all-time favorite, Lynx. Which also, of course, originally has been made for Unixoid systems like Linux. You press escape on the keyboard and then you're getting to the menu. You can now press uh, the arrow buttons to navigate left and right to whichever menu item you want. Then you press enter and then you can, um, yeah, well issue commands like you go up and down you can press the uh, arrows to navigate or the letter to jump immediately if i now press enter i can go to google in austria so that would work but i could also just go to bbc.co.uk and now one has, of course, to jump a little bit around, but as you can see, it is actually very usable. If you really are in a pinch, and if you have a really bad network connection, then Lynx is actually a great advantage to have on board somewhere. The other two I opted for are called SlimJet, and uh, just get it over there. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the best for you, given how no, enter, get in there. My mouse is crap too. <laughs> so, where was the program itself? Yeah, down here, SlimJet. So that looks rather civilized. These are portable apps, so I don't need to install them, which considering my strange and ancient XP system is an advantage. Fast? Well, nothing here is fast. I double clicked on it and we press enter again. I am being cons conspicuously ignored. Hopefully nothing else is up. Yeah, okay, great. And error collecting some lists. Okay, I'll just click no because I don't want to have this again. And now let's go to something like Again, let's go to the BBC. But this time .com simply. Okay, bbc.com, we are going there. Blah, be blah. But there we have it. It is actually working. I mean, this, the stuff which is uh, shown is not all that great. We're in the midst of the Ukraine war, but the browser is working. And the other browser, shall we translate? No and never. And the other one which I got, yep. Shall this be my standard browser? As a matter of fact, yes, I would like to have this standard browser. It's nice. Uh, Firefox is unfortunately no longer really usable being too antique and the other one i was going for was called otter browser which was equally very very cute looking and there it is otter browser with a little otter symbol so it's like a opera derivative i've always been a fan of opera And look oh, on, start up. Shall it continue? Uh, always begin with an empty page, please. Because any of this saving, ah, uh, it did save my tabs, okay. 
yeah and when their stat was my program with which I was checking the sizes of directories on the Windows XP in order to know where I may be having issues and the other thing is just a listing of my phone all right so that is the Otter browser and if I again go to the BBC so you have the comparison I will have gone to the BBC like in all three browsers the thundering and going there well, I must say this even looks better than slim jet so there we have it we have a working browser in Windows XP but after having shown you a little bit around I'll have to make a confession I am perhaps not really here for the browsing and maybe all of these other things like installing browsers and whatnot were just a detour to doing what I really would like to do now. Dun, dun, dun. And I'll take the Little Italy map because I like the chickens there. All right, everybody. <laughs> so that was my six year not turned on computer and it will now serve its original and proper purpose. With that, thank you very much for having joined today. Hope to greet you here soon again. I wish you a wonderful time until we meet each other again. And from me, goodbye.